So now in the last video, we looked at the uh, Schmidt trigger circuit using NPN, bipolar junction transistors. Now we're going to use an op amp, and there's uh, some different ways you can wire this. I have it wired as a comparator where the uh, signal comes to the non-inverting input and our reference voltage is to the inverting input. When it comes to the Schmidt trigger, you are working with uh, positive feedback. So that's going to the non-inverting input, the uh, plus sign when you look at the schematic symbol. So what that does, it pulls the voltage closer to what the output is right there. So 10 kilo ohm resistor that I'm using because I want a lot of hysteresis for this video so we can see it. So I got the trim pot. It's uh, mostly set to the positive supply and uh, I could turn it around so it points to the rails better but uh, that's as positive as it can go. Uh, somewhere about halfway you're going to see the LED turn off right there and then we'll go lower right there. So it was right about there where the LED turned off. I got to go up here for the LED to turn on and then down here again for the LED to turn off. So it's somewhere around the halfway range, but uh, not perfectly right there. And uh, so this middle area is called hysteresis, where the LED and the output will stay in whatever state they were last uh, put into, either high like that or low like that. So we got the uh, alligator clips clipped to these jumpers. That's where I'm taking my oscilloscope measurement. That's to the positive supply. And then we got uh, our ground right there to the negative supply, zero volts. So the uh, voltage at uh, the red alligator clip or trim pot is in relationship to ground zero volts and uh, so you can see I can easily uh, lower the voltage right there by turning the uh, trim pot down and uh, going back up the uh, magic spot here is two and a half volts because that's what we set with the fixed value resistors we'll look at that really quick right there halfway above uh, the second line right there which is two volts between two and three. We're a bit below that, so we gotta go up a little bit more. And uh, you'll see once we hit the uh, two and a half, the LED turned on and the voltage jumped up a bit, right above three volts, right there. And uh, so that's because the output went high, the voltage raised here, which pulled up the voltage over there. Because we got the uh, trim pot, which is a, a voltage divider. There's a uh, resistance towards the positive supply and resistance towards the negative supply and we just added some more uh, voltage from the positive supply so that pulls it up and then when we lower it we get to about the 2.5 volt range and then all of a sudden you see the voltage of the trim pot uh, dip down that's because the output is pulling the voltage down through that resistor and here is our schematic so we have the Fixed resistors there to the inverting input. Both of them were 10,000 ohm resistors, 10 kilo ohms, one of the positive supply, one of the negative. And uh, so half of the resistance towards each side, we end up with half the resistance at the inverting input. Remember, these inputs don't let current in or out. They just look at the voltage being applied to them. Then we had our trim pot to the non-inverting input, and it was influenced, the voltage, by this resistance coming from the output. The output help change its uh, resistance. So now when it comes to threshold, in our case, that's where I had to turn the trim pot. That wasn't the voltage that we were seeing. And uh, that's just uh, the way it works. You can see I had to turn it up a bit. That was the upper threshold before the output would change. And then I had to turn the trim pot down a uh, certain distance for the output to go low. That was the lower threshold. We could have made it where the uh, threshold was the voltage we saw if we had our signal at the inverting input and our fixed voltage at the non-inverting input but then the output would have been inverted and so when we raise the trim pot high enough the output would have gone low and if we lowered the trim pot enough the output would have gone high I think that would have been more confusing so maybe I'll do that next video but uh, for this video we made the output follow the uh, signal so we had to give the signal to the inverting input so in any case we got the resistor coming back and uh, the way this works here is that if the output is high so the trim pot's high enough where the output is high you can see we got uh, that connection right there and uh, hopefully it can provide enough current where the load won't impact it uh, very much but it doesn't matter we had hysteresis that's what we were aiming for 
at middle ground. So there's resistance from the positive supply coming that way. And then unless you put the trim pot all the way to the positive supply, as long as it's down at least a little bit, there's resistance from the positive supply that way. And uh, so we got two pads from the positive supply, even though it's going through resistance, that pulls the voltage up. It's like having less resistance. It's like having the trim pot even closer to uh, five volts than it actually is. If we get low enough, then uh, the output will go low, as we saw, and it connects to ground. So going through that resistor, plus you got ground from uh, some of the resistance through there, and uh, that equates to less resistance, parallel resistance. Like less resistance, there's uh, more uh, paths to uh, ground right there, and thus it pulls the voltage down compared to the uh, positive supply right there. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, 10 kilo ohms works really nice for uh, this video because we saw it bump from 2.5 to 3 volts when it uh, went high, the output, and we saw it went from 2.5 volts to uh, ground when the output switched to a ground. And uh, if we used a higher value resistor, then if the uh, output is high, there's more resistance than uh, a lower value. And uh, thus, it would not connect as well. You know, so you'd still have some hysteresis. It'd have some effect, but not as much. Whereas if you have less resistance, then you have a uh, better connection, basically, to uh, 5 volts through that resistor. And thus, you'd have more hysteresis. You'd have to get more negative to overcome it. It probably wouldn't take uh, too low of a value resistor where you'd have to go all the way to ground to overcome the high uh, output right there. So that would finally do it all the way to ground. But in uh, any case, uh, that's really about it. We have the uh, LED. It's got to be in the right way. I actually swapped the position. This happens to me a lot where I draw it one way and on the board because uh, the way the board is, it's easier to uh, stretch the resistor. And uh, so the LED, you kind of put it just in the best spot for it. And uh, so in any case, long lead the anode towards the output, short lead the cathode to ground because that was our final connection ground. If you put it in the other way, it's never gonna light up. So in any case, we have the yeah, pin layout here. As I said, there's one op amp on the right, one on the left, and then we had to power it. Positive supply to pin eight and uh, negative supply ground to uh, pin 4. Output on top, inverting input right below it, so output 1, and then inverting input pin 2, non-inverting input pin 3 right there. Pretty straightforward. So, in any case, that's it for this video. Check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen, and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.